Now if we hit BPR again, you're gonna see it's gonna go ahead and render out and now we have our shadows cast. And you're also gonna see it was only rendering shadows. If you want to see more things you can render, go up here to your render menu, and we'll go ahead and dock that menu here. And you're going to see underneath render properties, we're rendering shadow, uh, shadows here. You can also render subsurface scattering, you can render fog, you can render ambient occlusion if you want to. If I go down here to this submenu down here, you're going to see there's BPR shadow settings and there's also BPR AO settings. The BPR AO settings are grayed out, that's because we don't have this turned on underneath the render properties. So we have shadows turned on, let's go ahead and turn on ambient occlusion, and now you're going to see these uh, options are available to us, and now if we hit BPR, it's going to take a little bit longer because it's rendering shadows and AO. You're going to see now we have AO rendered, and if you go to the render menu, and down here to the render pass, you're going to see if you hover over these, we have a shaded pass, a depth pass, which is our Z buffer, so you can see what's closer to the camera is white and what's further away from the camera is black. That's cool for like a lens blur effect in Photoshop later. Here's your shadow pass and then here's your AO pass. Again, if you want to play around with these properties, you can go down here to BPR AO. For example, if you want to turn that blur down, you can make this blur instead of eight. You can put that down on two. This is a global blur. So if we hit BPR again, you can see it re-rendered AO, but it didn't re-render our shadows this time. What I'm going to have to do is like bump my object out so that ZBrush isn't storing any of the shadow information in memory, and then we'll use our arrow keys to snap back to our original movie timeline camera, and then we'll hit BPR again. So essentially what ZBrush does is it stores your uh, passes in here, your shadow and uh, I mean occlusion in this case, and it stores that into memory. So if I want to, I can switch to like green metallic matte cap, and then when I hit BPR again, it goes really fast because all of that's stored in memory. Although it seems to be not rendering once I've rendered once, I should be able to swap out to another material and render again. There we go. And now it's, it's, it's stored your AO and your shadow in memory. So if I go back through here and I switch back to matte cap gray and hit BPR, it'll just go ahead and throw your original AO and shadow back on there. So it's smart enough to know, hey, you're just swapping out materials. Your shadow and AO paths aren't going to change. So I'm going to render really quickly. However, if you move your camera and hit BPR again, that's going to clear memory, and now it's going to re-render your AO and your shadow. Now, because we turned that blur down, you're going to see my AO has been tightened up considerably. And if you want to, you can also turn up your resolution, and that'll even increase the resolution of your shadow. As well as the overall global strength of your uh, AO right here is here. And this right here is your floor ambient occlusion strength, so whatever the floor is capturing. It'll increase or decrease that global value here. Now, for my shadows, you're going to see they're very, very sharp you might consider just taking this blur and cranking that up. Instead, what I would do is I consider uh, increasing my angle. You're going to see the angle on my BPR shadow is set to 360. Essentially, if I took my, or my BPR AO is set to angle 360, if I take my BPR shadow and crank that angle up, that would essentially turn this shadow into a, an AO shadow. However, if I just take this to like maybe, let's try five, and then I hit uh, BPR again. So if you watch the shadow here, you're going to see as it gets further away from my object, it starts to blur out. So if we keep increasing this angle, let's say 10. You're going to see here it's nice and crispy where it's close to the object, and then as it gets further away from my object, it gets a little blurrier. Now this blur right here, you're going to see it gets a little bit crunchy in here. That's because we have very low ray value. You're going to see our AO has 20 rays. If you want to make more information be rendered for your ambient occlusion, you can increase this ray and increase the resolution. Um, for the shadows, if I want blurrier shadows, there's two things I can do. Number one, I can increase my angle. Number two, I can increase my rays, and this is going to increase the quality of the shadow. So if I crank this up to like, say, 50, and then BPR render, you're going to see it takes a little bit longer than it did previously, but we are going to get a much nicer, more accurate shadow cast. It's still uh, pretty crispy where it's close to the object again, but then it gets blurry, but we still have a little bit of a better effect here, a little bit more information being uh, generated here. And again, if you want to blur these shadows even more, you can actually drop the resolution down. So you can try maybe a 2048 or a 1024 on your shadow resolution. Now this is going to essentially get less information and cause it to be blurrier just because you're dropping the resolution of your shadows, so it'll render faster, but then you're getting less quality. So you can kind of just balance between your angle and your rays. Increasing the rays will increase your render 
uh, time, but dropping the resolution will lower your render time, so you can kind of play with those values to kind of dial in exactly the shadow quality that you want. And the exact same things apply to the BPR AO properties as well.